I'm Gilbert Travis here. Waking up here this morning at the Miami Airport Hotel, heading in to see the new updated Centurion Lounge here in Miami, and then taking a flight on the Airbus A319. We'll talk about that a little closer to getting on. All right, see you here in the Amex Lounge. First, we had a chance to visit our favorite lounge, newly expanded, the Amex Centurion Lounge at Miami. This lounge is of excellent quality, but has been known to get quite busy, so it has been expanded to the west with a bar-type seating area facing the windows, a second cold food buffet, second bar area, and almost double the available seating in total. This has been a much needed and much welcomed addition. I've come to always expect high quality meals and today's breakfast was no exception. I grabbed a smoothie and a coffee and did a little plane spotting by the window including seeing our aircraft waiting for us at the gate today. Checking in with you here at the new American Express Improved Lounge here in Miami. Today we're going to be flying from Miami to Raleigh-Durham on the Airbus A319. This is interesting because the A319 is American's second smallest mainline aircraft that's not operated by a regional carrier. They are retiring the E195 from their fleet in favor of more of these A319s and this is a perfect example of that. This aircraft is actually about 15 years old, but it was uh, operated by Frontier Airlines until just the end of last year, and it has now been reconfigured into an American aircraft. We're going to be flying the A319 today in first class, which is interesting also because it is only two rows, so a total of eight passengers. I'm expecting a pretty good service here on this short flight, so come along with us. See you on board. Today we enter a very small 8-seat first-class cabin in a 2-2 configuration and we are all the way in the second road in 2A and C today. This is the smallest first-class cabin in American's mainline fleet. The baby bus was the first aircraft type in American's fleet to get retrofit with the new style first-class seat being utilized in the 737 MAX, A321, NEO and the Project Oasis retrofit aircraft. Since this aircraft had only been in service with American for a few weeks, these seats were of course in excellent shape. This is also basically the same seat as the 777 has in premium economy, as I flew last year as well. Also, unlike my 737 flight last year, I'm not in a bulkhead row, so this time I can show you the backside of the seat in front of me. As you can see, where the entertainment would be expected is a large literature area. The latest version of this seat on the A321neo has an integrated tablet holder and USB charge port similar to the Project Oasis coach seats. We received a pre-departure glass of water in plastic cups. As a fan of drink tray tables, I do appreciate the pop-out extension from the center armrest. It is a shame the large space behind the next row's armrest was not used for any additional storage like on the A321. We will look at the rest of the seat once we're in the air. All right, we're on board and headed to Raleigh. See you in the air. As we get in the air for today's flight, whether you are new to Gilbert Travels or returning, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell. It means a lot to us and helps you know when new videos post. Please follow us on Instagram for more content and to have a heads up on my flights before these video reviews post.
So let's have a look around the seat now that we're up in the air. I do like that the upper literature pocket leaves the lower mesh pouch open for personal items, and the amount of space on offer in these seats is very generous. The placement of the seat supports is much better for legroom than the one in the premium economy version. Space in the bulkhead row, however, does not seem too generous. Overhead, you will find individual air and light options, and American did take the extra step to remove the center vent and light for this first class layout. The layout of these seats provides two perfectly framed windows for excellent viewing as well as a bright open feel. Under the inner armrest, you will find a storage area equipped with a universal power port. There is no USB power, so make sure you have your device charger ready. It's also located all the way in the back of the compartment, which is awkward to reach when sitting, so consider plugging your charger in as soon as you get settled before taking off. The aisle seat outer armrest does lower flush with the seat bottom to aid in getting in and out of the seat. Contained inside is a two-piece tray table, when half deployed, featuring a cup indentation. Fully deployed, it has plenty of space for a meal or a laptop computer and is a generous amount of sliding adjustment. If you've been watching Gilbert Travels at all, you know I love an adjustable headrest, and today's was very much approved of. The bulkhead design has been notched to allow full recline in first class without taking away any space in coach. The amount of recline on offer is quite generous, and I definitely took full advantage today. At our seats, we were provided a standard airline blanket as the sole amenity for today's flight. In terms of literature, there is of course the expected safety card, as well as the premium cabin exclusive Celebrated Living magazine, rather than the standard American way. This contains content and advertising I suppose American feels would be more targeted to someone sitting in the front of their aircraft. Lastly, you have the entertainment guide, with the month's new movie releases and detailed instructions to connect to the wireless entertainment on any number of personal devices. I have covered the features of this application several times in other American reviews, however today was the first time I could not get the streaming entertainment to load. Live TV, however, did function. I really find this to be a very comfortable cabin, but it does have a little controversy among American's frequent flyers. American flies all of Airbus's narrow-body aircraft types, except for the very smallest A318. American is retiring their mainline Embraer fleet of 19 E190 aircraft in favor of acquiring more A319s to bring the total to 133 in service. A quick review of the airline literature shows that this will result in an increase from 99 to 128 total seats per flight. The plus is that the number of extra legroom main cabin extra seats will triple from 8 to 24. However, the coveted first class seats will drop from 11 down to 8, decreasing the likelihood of upgrades on the routes served by the E190 today. The regional Eagle branded flights with the E175 I reviewed last time will not be affected at all by this change. Today's service started with drink orders in real glasses. I ordered an apple juice and a hot coffee. Disappointingly, we did not get a hot towel or warm nut service this morning. However, the flight attendant was also responsible for coach service and was otherwise quite attentive. Today's meal followed shortly. There was only one option and unfortunately it left a lot to be desired. The not overly ripe banana was sadly the highlight of today's meal. The provided sandwich had one slice of cheese, a couple slices of mystery meat, on something appearing to be a bagel. The presentation itself was nice, with a napkin and a neat background under the tray showing off the Hong Kong skyline and metal cutlery. The sandwich itself was cold, dry, and while it tasted okay, I would have expected this quality for a buy on board economy option. It's really a shame to me that most airline breakfasts are disappointing. Do you have any excellent or bad airline breakfast experiences? Share in the comments section below. After meal completion, I pulled out my laptop to check out the wireless experience on the larger screen, but it was having issues as well, so I spent a little time working on video editing. The seat itself is still lacking some padding, and even started to get a bit stiff on this short flight. However, it was more comfortable than our experience on the 737, which had airbag-equipped seat belts. 
well as we were in a bulkhead row with less space. For some reason, Grace's feet did not touch the ground on the 737, but did on this aircraft. Right now, she'll be landing in approximately 30 minutes at uh, yeah, 10.45ish. We certainly hope you enjoyed flying with us this morning. We hope to see you back real soon. So that was a very good flight this morning. Really enjoy that. Anytime you get to fly in a premium cabin, even on a narrow body domestic aircraft here, it's a good time and it's really something you have to appreciate. I uh, really enjoyed that A319. The first class cabin is very small on it, very intimate. Don't think I've ever been on a first class cabin that's that small with just two rows. So it really feels nice. I know that uh, for elites, for free upgrades, it's a little small. So chances of upgrading are a little slimmer. But if you can get a good rate on just buying your tickets on that flight, it's a nice spot to be. Overall, the meal service was disappointing, but most breakfasts on airlines are. So can't really complain too much, I suppose, for such a short flight. Overall, really had a good time. Would recommend that aircraft. And hope to see you in the sky in the next video. Thank you for watching. Come back again soon for more flight reviews here at Gilbert Travels. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be made aware when more content is available. Thanks for watching.